Hello everyone. Welcome back to Hobbies and More, where I explore all kinds of fun and fulfilling hobbies. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss an update. Today, I am talking about apartment gardening. Yes, you can have a thriving garden even in a small apartment. 5 Top Tips for Successful Apartment Gardening Let's jump right in. Always remember, patience is the key word in gardening. If you want to become a successful plant parent, be patient. Here, tip number one. Choose the right plants. Not all plants thrive indoor, so it's very crucial to pick varieties that do well in low to moderate light and don't require a lot of space. You can start with three basic must-have plants, which also can purify air. Spider plants, snake plants and pothos, which we normally know as money plant. These are great for purifying air and can tolerate low light conditions An excellent choice for any busy beginner's gardener. When you successfully maintain these plants for 6 months, then you can expand your collection. Now it's time to add some color to your collection. Add different types of aglonema. You can find different types of aglonema in different local nurseries. It costing starts from 50 rupees to 300 rupees based on their size. I suggest start with basic varieties and slowly add other varieties to your collection. I have 6 to 7 varieties in my collection right now. Now again wait for 3 to 4 months and parenting them then go for next stage. This time add philodendron to your collection. Such a rich and rare looking plants there. There are hundreds of varieties available in the market. Go and collect any of them one by one. Nurture and propagate. Now almost a year when you are very much used to with all your leafy companions. Now start adding some flowers to your collection. But before that, you should study sunlight timing and their entering pattern to your apartment. Few low maintenance apartment friendly flowers are Sadabahar or Periwinkle, Star Jasmine, Crescentra, Blue Pea, Aparajita. These are the best plants for busy beginner plant lovers who wants a piece of garden and green with flower to their apartment and balcony. If still, you have space, you can start with your small herb garden. You can grow your own lemongrass, basil, mint. People are saying coriander is also very easy to grow in apartment but me, I am not much lucky and maybe I am doing some mistakes. I cannot have a large green coriander in my apartment so I am not giving that tips to you. But yes, you can also try some succulent this time like aloe vera, jade and few fancy varieties. But be careful about watering to succulent. After killing so many succulents, I understood twice a month watering is sufficient for them. And yes, be careful about temperature. Succulents are not that much beginner friendly, but yes, their beauty is irresistible. Now going to tip number two. This is optimizing your lighting. Most plants need plenty of light. As you all know, plants are actually thrives in outdoor only. When you bought them indoor or in a semi-shaded balcony, first thing you remember to give them optimized lighting like the natural habitat. Always mimic plants natural habitat for best result. First thing, study light button and time to your apartment and place them accordingly near window, balcony, where they can get 1 to 2 hours to 6 to 7 hours of sunlight per day. Some of them only like depth light, so put them in a place where they get bright indirect light but no direct sun rays. If your apartments are not at all get much natural light, only then you can consider to investing in some grow lights. This can provide the necessary light spectrum that your plants need to thrive but i don't think any beginner gardener 
and busy gardener will do that. Grow lights are only for pro gardeners who are mostly addicted for plants. Now moving to tip number three, use the right containers. The containers you choose for your plants are more important than you might think. They can greatly influence the health and growth of your plants. Here's what you need to know about selecting the right containers for your apartment garden. First, let's talk about size. The size of your container should match the size of your plant. Small plants with shallow roots like herbs do well in smaller pots. However, your plants grows. It might need to be reported into a larger container to allow its roots to give more room to expand. A good rule of thumb is to choose a pot that's about 2 inches larger in diameter than the root ball of your plant. Next is the drainage system of your pot is very crucial. Always choose containers with drainage holes at the bottom. These holes allow excess water to escape, preventing water from sitting in the soil and causing root rot. If you fall in love with the container that doesn't have drainage hole, you can drill some yourself or use it as a decorative outer cover for a plant with some drainage hole. The material of your container also makes some difference. There are some common types of uh, containers, a terracotta containers. These are clay pots. These are porous, allowing air and moisture to move through the walls. This can help prevent overwatering, but they can also dry out quickly, so they might need more frequent watering. If you go for plastic pots, they are lightweight, they can retain moisture well and are less likely to break if dropped. They are very good all around choice, especially for plants, they like to stay moist. You can also go for some clay ceramic pots, which are beautiful and come in many styles. They retain moisture well, but make sure they have drainage holes. For those of us with limited space, get creative with our containers and key. I can give you some ideas. Those are hanging baskets. Those are perfect for trailing plants like ivy, ferns. They save floor space and add greenery at different levels of your home. Then you can go for wall-mounted planters. These are great for herbs and small succulents. They free up counter space and can be a stylish addition to your decor. Also, you can go for tired plant stands. This allows you to stack multiple plants vertically, maximizing your space while creating a beautiful display. You can see all sort of things are in my garden for getting more and more space. You must understood by the time, I am a very much plant addicted person. Lastly, consider using self-watering pots. That those are especially if you are a very busy person. These pots have a reservoir at the bottom that allows the plants to absorb water as needed, reducing the risk of overwatering or underwatering. They are particularly useful for plants that need constant moisture. Now moving to point number four that is watering humidity. First, let's understand your plant's watering needs. Different plants have different requirements. For instance, succulents and cacti, as I told you earlier, needs very less frequent watering compared to the ferns and tropical plants. A good way to check your plants need water by the sticking your finger about an inch into the soil if it feels dry, it's time to water. If it's still moist, wait a few more days. I think if you are interested in gardening, by the time you know this fact. Now, proper watering technique is also very important. When you water, do it slowly and evenly, ensuring that water reaches the roots. Water until you see it starts to drain out from the bottom of the pot. This ensures that the entire root system gets hydrated. Avoid letting your plants sit in the standing water as this can lead to root rot. Water quality also can make a difference. Most houseplants do well with tap water, but if you have very hard water, it might be beneficial to use filtered or distilled water. Hard water can leave mineral deposit on the soil and leaves which can affect plants health over time. Humidity is another critical factor, especially for tropical plants. Many home, particularly in winter, can be very dry air, which can stress your plant. 
aim for a humidity level is around 40-60% for most house plant. I am staying in Navi Mumbai. I am not facing this type of problem of humidity. Normally you can mist your plants and keep all plants together then a humidity level will increase for plants. Uh, I can give you some ways to increase your humidity around your plants. For a pro gardener you can place a humidifier and maintain the ideal humidity level which I guess you are not going to do. So you can try pebble trays that is fill a tray with pebbles and water then place your plant pots on the top as the water evaporates it increases the humidity around the plants. As I told you lightly mist your plants with water however be careful not to overdo it as constant wet leaves can lead to mold and mildew. Remember that your watering and humidity needs might change with the seasons. In winter plants generally need less water because they grow more slowly and the air tends to be drier. In summer you might need to water more frequently and take extra steps to maintain humidity especially if you are running air conditioning. Always keep an eye out for signs of improper watering or humidity. Yellow leaves can indicate overwatering while brown and crispy edges often signals low humidity. Adjust your watering schedule and humidity level accordingly to keep your plants healthy. Tip number 5 is regular maintenance. This is the key to keeping your apartment garden thriving. Just like any other living thing, plants need constant care and attention. Let's go over some essential maintenance tasks to keep your plant healthy and beautiful. First up, pruning and trimming. Regularly remove dead and yellow leaves and paint flowers. This not only keeps your plant looking tidy but also encourages new growth and prevents diseases. For flowering plants, dead heading or removing spent blooms can promote further blooming. Use clean, sharp scissors or pruning shears to avoid damaging the plant. Next, let's talk about pest control. Indoor plants can attract pests like spider mites, aphids, mealybugs. Regularly inspect your plants, especially the undersides of leaves for any signs of pest. If you find any, you can use natural remedies like neem oil, insecticidal soap or homemade mix of water and dish soap. For small infestation, wiping the leaves with damp cloth can also help. Dusting the leaves is another important task, can accumulate on plant leaves, blocking sunlight and hindering photosynthesis. Use a soft damp cloth to gently wipe down the leaves every few weeks. For plants with smaller leaves, a gentle shower can do the trick. Just be careful not to overwater the soil when rinsing. Now about fertilizing. Fertilizing provides your plants with the nutrients they need to grow. Use a balanced water soluble fertilizer in every 4 to 6 weeks during the growing season which is typically spring and summer. Be sure to follow the instruction on the package to avoid over fertilizing which can harm your plants. In winter, plants usually need less fertilizer as they grow more slowly. Rotating your plants is simple yet effective way to ensure even growth. Plants tend to grow towards the light. So turning them every few weeks can help them grow more symmetrically and prevent them from becoming lopsided. Finally, monitor your plants for sign of stress. Yellowing leaves, drooping and slow growth can indicate various issues like overwatering, underwatering or nutrient deficiency. Pay attention to those signals and adjust your care routine accordingly. Healthy plants are better able to resist and diseases and there you have it my top tips for successful apartment gardening thanks for watching and I hope you find these tips helpful if you did please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends let me know in the comments below what is your favorite indoor plants and if you have any tips to share happy gardening and I'll see you in the next video on next Monday bye